Welcome to episode 460 of The Ziggler Show. This episode of The Ziggler Show is brought to you in part by Constant Contact. If you own a business, you know that success is all about relationships. That's why Constant Contact's email marketing makes it easy to connect with new customers and stay in touch with the ones you already have. Its smooth drag and drop design offers the most simplified editing experience possible. And Constant Contact even offers free live coaching on the phone, online, or in your neighborhood. So if you ever have a question or need a little marketing advice, there's always someone to help. See how you can be a marketer with a free trial at constantcontact.com slash podcast. Before we dig in, I want to introduce you real quick to Veridesk, who is sponsoring this show. When they contacted us, I'd already been using a Veridesk for over two years. Absolutely love it. Now, Tom Ziegler has one as well. Today, you can find a Veridesk at over 90% of all Fortune 500 companies. Why? Research says sitting is the new smoking. Uh, but people who stand more and sit less say their back feels better and they're more productive, which I can attest to, of course. I stand for about 75% of my work day and it keeps me fidgeting, moving around. I turn and pace when I'm on the phone. I'll often do some squats or calf raises. It's amazing at how it just advocates movement instead of sitting idle on your desk like a bump on a log. It's super easy also. You can just plop it on your existing desk. The height is adjustable and there's no assembly. All the details are at veridesk.com slash podcast. That's V-A-R-I-D-E-S-K dot com slash podcast. And you can join the movement movement. Okay. Well, dad. Fun to have you in here. First live person in the studio for the video recording, uh, which we have not done before, which folks you can see again at the Ziegler YouTube channel as of the posting of this. But today we're talking about investing in yourself. Uh, we were talking about this at dinner because it's a blog and a podcast that you just posted. And I wanted to dive in because this is exactly Ziegler material, uh, of course. I mean, growing up with you, I you talk, talked a lot about investing in yourself and it was really just, I guess, by proxy part of what we did. But as I thought about this big picture and talking to the masses, I, my wondering was in general, most people do go to college. That's an investment in self. After that is that often where it stops. That's it. You know, there are a lot of times who people who actually brag about the fact that they haven't read a book since they graduated from college. And I hear that from attorneys, people who are professionals even, which just breaks my heart. There ought to be a continued investment in personal development. And without that, I think your success is pretty well going to flatline. Well, so when you look at just exposure to investing in yourself, now, you know, you, you had, you made it a little more specific on the blog, but let's start off with just the concept of investing in yourself. Okay. In what areas, what are the general areas for overall? Well, like Ziegler, you know, has this, the wheel of life. It could probably be a good right. place to start there of, okay, what are ways to invest in myself that you do see people partaking of consistently, but a lot of us are missing. Well, in, in what I'm focused on right now, it really is this process of, you know, personal development, uh, not just things that we would do to improve our health or relationships, although the carryover there is inevitable, but to really be strategic about investing in oneself. A lot of times people think, well, you know, I don't have any extra money this month, so I can't buy a book. I can't go to that conference. I can't go to the seminar. I can't buy an online course. Those are the kind of things that I think we ought to have a, an exact budget line item so we see it as an opportunity to invest in ourselves. And frankly, this is an area where we're going to get a compounded return unlike anything else. I think people invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds. You know, those are things for conservative people to just kind of protect the money they already have. But with what we're talking about here, this is a way to exponentially increase your level of success and income. And as we'll talk about your health and relationships as byproducts as well. Okay. So uh, there is, and I've talked, I, I know you have as well. We have a lot of people who digest a ton of information, knowledge or listening to all these blog or uh, podcasts or listening to all these blogs or reading all these books, good stuff. But is that when we, when you look at really making an investment, can somebody sit there and say, yeah, well, Hey, I, I listened to a podcast today. I'm good. 
<laughs> well, especially you, if it's Dan really, Miller's <laughs> podcast. You really jumped ahead conceptually here to how we have to break this down because access to knowledge or even paying for knowledge is not enough. And there are people who are just knowledge junkies. They just continue to go to seminars and conferences or they read 103 books last year. Well, it might have been better to have read 10 and really digested them okay. and made the application because we have to go beyond knowledge. Knowledge is not enough. Knowledge won't change your life at all. You have to move beyond that to understanding and application. So that's right. a really big point. Um, I didn't know we were going to bring that up. I didn't this quickly, I but that's just, okay. That's just what came to mind. You're, you're really right. You can be just an information junkie. But the first thing is to recognize this principle of investing 3% of your income back into yourself. Okay, so where do we, uh, we get out of college, we go get a job, and, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, I would assume, in the regular workplace, and even as self-employed folks like you and I are, I mean, there are things that we have to do to stay up with the times, to progress there, but when you're talking about investing yourself, so we were just at lunch with uh, my partner, Randy, and he just got back from a conference and that was a question I asked. Obviously you can go to things where you are increasing your, you're getting information, increasing your knowledge, but is that necessarily a, an investment in ourselves? It's kind of like getting what, you know, what is, what are we talking when you're talking about? I think you mentioned personal growth. Mm-hmm. That's a specific investing in myself, even as opposed to going to a conference where I learned how this widget works or how to apply this, Thing to my business, it may not be personal growth. Are you really trying to, in this format, steer it towards something that is growing me, Kevin Miller, as an individual to be better tomorrow than I am today? That's right. And that's a very individualized process. This is like going to a smorgasbord for lunch where you have 200 items out there. It's not a matter of, well, you know, I just need four things. So I'll take four things just arbitrarily. No, you choose carefully what you need, what will benefit you most. So this is a very individualized process, but a lot of people never step up to the smorgasbord at all in this arena. They just go day to day and they don't do the little things that could dramatically increase their level of success. So let me give you an example. And let's take it just at the bottom of the barrel here in terms of where somebody is economically. They don't have to be, you know, making millions of dollars. If somebody's making $12 an hour, $12 an hour, that's, roughly $25,000 a year income. Now that's not a whole lot, but my recommendation is they use 3% of that income and it's easy to calculate monthly. That's $58 okay. a month. So you can listen to podcasts, which are free. You can, you know, use a library, but I would encourage you to start building your own success library. So here's an, as an example, I would suggest that people get see you at the top by Zig Ziglar and how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. Those two Immediately, and my recommendations we'll are. Up for the video viewers. There right you go. There. You got it. There's a, right off Kevin's shelf. Top. That's an old copy. Uh, old co- Actually, this is a new copy. See the top. Old copy I talked about recently, 1964 edition. I think of How to Win Friends and Influence People that my dad I think required me to read. Absolutely. You know, and and, and what I suggest is not to go to the library and just borrow them and read them mm. and take them back. Buy them. It changes your mindset when you start building your own personal library. And with that, even somebody making 12 bucks an hour can start to change the trajectory of their life. You could, with $58 a month, you subscribe to Success, Inc., Fast Company, Entrepreneur, you know, a couple things like that. As we move up, 48 bucks, you can join 48 Days Eagles. Uh, There's a good a good one. Okay, which literally is, folks, and uh, I think I, I gave you that in the intro. But, okay, but let's talk about that, a book, because I, I do think we get in the habit as a culture, and especially in the personal development world where we are going through, getting, exposing ourselves to great stuff. We, we are viewing it, reading, listening, whatever, but what are we doing with that? It seems like you could, um, and maybe you do with people, that you could almost have some best practices for taking in information and actually doing something with it. I know with a book that if I just read, if I'm, if I have a book and I don't have something to write with, I feel, uh, it's like it's, it's impotent. It's just, I'm, I can't do, I gotta be able to write in the book or mark the pages or write something down. I mean, it's a way to help me 
digest it and actually get something from that? Is that something, yeah, just from a, an, a daily habits thing that you do with books, with, with podcasts, with blogs, if you're, if you're, if you're at lunch with somebody who you're gleaning from some things that you can do easy habits of not just listening, not just reading, but actually uh, doing the Applying. physiological. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. There's got to be that. I go to a lot of conferences and I go not anticipating something's going to change my life or business dramatically, but expecting to come away with two or three ideas that could dramatically add to the success path that I'm on. I, I'm very open about the fact, uh, Kevin, as you know, that when people come to 48 days events or purchase products, they get a 10 X return. So if somebody invests twenty dollars in a book. I expect them to get a ten times return in the next twelve months. So that's true at any level. So if I go to a conference and I pay two thousand dollars to go to that conference, I really expect that I'm going to get one or two ideas that are going to add twenty thousand dollars to my income over the next twelve months. I just go with that anticipation and find it again and again and again that bears itself out. But that's by applying the things. It's not just by having a new piece of head knowledge or just by buying the, somebody's materials in a grocery bag and setting them on a shelf when I get home. That's by taking massive action and the things that I'm going to do. Okay. So on that, would that not be a relevant thing for all of us to do, to look at over the past month, week, whatever past, let's say past month, how many good value blogs have you read? How many podcasts have you listened to? How many books have you read? Did you attend a seminar or a webcast, whatever? Are you part of a membership you know, community that you actually went in and partook or engaged with in, in or not? So now at the end of the 30 days, it'd be a good, it'd be a good journal exercise for me in the morning. What did I change as a result of that? Positive ent entertainment. It's great. Inspiration, hope is good. But if I did not change, it seems like that's a great question for us all to be continually, continually asking ourselves. It is. Kevin, you probably remember this was years ago when I was doing physical seminars. We would have them in hotel conference rooms on the weekends and things and things were going well there. And I started to hear about these things called online seminars. And uh -huh. I thought, would people really pay just to pick up the telephone at the time? It was before we even had slick internet access, but to pick up the telephone, would they pay to participate in a seminar? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I did was look around to see who is doing that well. And there was a guy, his name is Alex Mendozian, still a player out there. He had a course called Teleseminar Secrets. It was $1,800. That was a lot of money. Now, you can tell him what I said about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think your encouragement was that you don't spend the money. We can figure this out. But my, my theory has always been find somebody who's doing it really well and pay for their expertise to shorten the learning curve. So we did that. $1,800 went through his course. And one of the things that he told us to do was ask our audience how much they would pay. I had anticipated charging for a teleseminar that people would just listen to, maybe 7 or $9, something like that. We asked our audience, and the feedback we got led us to charge for that very first teleseminar we did $69. The night we did that seminar was 70 minutes, and the night we did that, not only did we cover all of our expenses incurred in that, but we put a clean $18,000 in our bank account. If you remember the original cost, it was $1,800. Mm -hmm. That's one of those exact mm -hmm. 10 times return on investing and then doing what they said to do. And we got a 10 times return instantly. There are other examples. I mean, you've been with me to Mark Victor Hansen conferences, Megabook University. I went to the very first one of those in 2002 in Los Angeles. We took our friends, um, Dave and Sharon Ramsey went with your mom and me to that. We sat there, listened, came back and just did. It was $695 to go to that conference, which again, back then, you know, that was still a lot of money to go and flights out there and hotels and all. So it was an investment, but I came back and just started doing what this gracious, generous man who sold a whole lot of copies of chicken soup for the soul said to do. I went back to that conference, 2006, and was on stage with Mark Victor Hansen and got to tell what happened in those four years in between because I had sold over $2 million of my own little three ring binder, 48 days to the work you love and had two book deals that came together in that period of time as well. That's what happens. That's why I believe so much from my personal experience, invest in my personal development and I see the return come back multiplied over. Okay. So let's talk about literally the money of, of that. So you're, and folks, again, you can go find this 
uh, at the blog. I believe it's a March 21st, 19, how about 2017 that it's posted at 48 days.com. Go to the blog and you can find uh, this and look through some of the little calculations you do monetarily. But basically you're saying for those folks who are, you, you capped it at 50,000, if you're making 50,000 or, or making under 50,000 that you're taking 3%. Yes. Of your, of your income and doing that. Now, something that we just talked about at lunch was in relation to a product. I can't remember what we were talking about and, and what, how much we were charging for it. And somebody made the statement of, yeah, even if you don't need the money, charge people for it, even if we're going to give it to charity, just so that they will feel the weight of that investment and therefore engage and participate. Talk about that a little bit, even from an exercise of needing to spend money. There is a relevance just to the money. We're, we're going, it's not just the spirit we're talking about. You're really talking about cash and what that does. So Dan jumps all over that question and I'll give him to you after thanking a really cool service for their support of this show, Captera. It's a place you need to check out before you buy any software. I run so much of my businesses using online technology email marketing platforms, text marketing platforms, websites, and hosting companies. On the wellness business, I use a membership platform. I use medical records, patient communication tools. It's endless. So while I love using these software products, utilizing them, it can be mind-blowing to figure out which ones to use. So Captera has made all that incredibly easy. They take membership management as an example. I use that. I went and searched for it by category. Captera gave me 185 of them. All of them have reviews. I can search by three stars or higher, four star, stars or higher. I can filter by web-based or installed or most popular. Then check this out. I can check the box of as many as I want then hit a link to compare them. It's just brilliant. Capteria has an easy to use website with over 400 categories of software to choose from. Whether you need help with website building, customer service, project management, Capterra is a place to go. And here's the best part. Using Capterra is absolutely free. No obligation. You don't even need to register. It's a free resource that will help you make the right software decisions. Join the millions of people who use Capterra every month by visiting capterra.com slash Ziggler. That's C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash Ziggler and find the software that will help you do what you do better. Oh my gosh. I mean, it totally does. Having people invest in the process changes the mindset. That's why I recommend people buy those two original books, not just get them out of the library, buy them. It changes how you feel about engaging with the content there. And the same thing is true at every level. Yeah, I, I have a mastermind. We were talking at lunch right. where people often say that they're getting in the mastermind what they had looked for in a church, the dynamics of understanding, mutual accountability, challenging each other, growing together, sharing life together. They get that there and in a way that they had never experienced in a church. Now, that being said, the irony is they're paying a lot of money to have that experience. And when we think that in churches, everything has to be free. People expect that. But it, 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 it's a counterintuitive kind of idea, knowing that if people don't pay anything, there's no real engagement. They don't value it. Wow. It's funny. I mean, how much more would I get out of church <laughs> if I had to pay 50 bucks to get in the door? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You know, we have a hard time. Putting there's a good idea for somebody. New church, okay? <laughs> this is the church of results. That's right. You got to pay to be We're a The results driven church. Can we do that instead of purpose driven? Absolutely. Well, we know the principle works. There are certain applications in life and in our culture that we'd have a hard time putting it in place. And as a business guy, I see it work again and again and again. And, and one thing too, we sometimes people, people think, well, how long do I have to do this? And incidentally, you mentioned that investing 3% is my recommendation up to 50, about $50,000 a year. At that point, I recommend that you increase to 5%, just a little bit more. Now I never recommend you increase it more, even if you're making millions, but keep it at 5%. So that you continue to do that. And we see that if people continue to do that, the success can, continues. I, at this point in my life, it, it's a principle. Like a lot of people understand the principle of tithing. And they really believe, you know, and rightfully so, that if you break that principle, it would somehow impede or stop or stifle God's blessings flowing through you. I believe in this principle every bit as much. That's why I don't want to break the cycle. 
It doesn't matter if I try to talk myself into the fact that I don't need it anymore. I mean, I went to a conference not too long ago and I just thought it was a conference that I wanted to go to. And I paid the regular price, got a ticket, sat in the back of the room and I had people coming up saying, Hey Dan, when are you going to speak? Hmm. I'm not. And they were, they couldn't understand that I was there just as a regular participant as they were. I do that all the time because I believe in the value of that investment. I don't want to break the cycle. Yeah. I'm afraid that if I stopped investing in myself, it would stagnate my own success. And we find that people who are ultra successful, I mean, people like Richard Branson and Elon Musk, these guys spend big bucks to go to conferences and seminars and hang out, spend time with people who are high achievers because they realize the ongoing power of doing that. Even if they don't need to increase where they are financially, they recognize the value of doing that. Well, and I've talked about that on the show that you as a father exemplified that you and mom both did to me uh well really even more later in life as an adult as i've seen you achieve levels of success that a lot of people would desire to be at that you did not end up there and say i'm good and now you just stay mm -hmm. home all the time that you were constantly investing in yourself and uh, i think tom in a recent show was talking about his dad zig ziglar so here's a guy who's influenced more people than just about anybody. And yet he was the first one to be reading, but he was always talking about the books that he's reading books of people who, of course, you know, said that he was their mentor and he's reading their books to see what he can glean in that concept. So you're talking about a discipline and, and a habit, uh, on, on one hand, I back to the money. I, I do want to hit one thing there. Well, kind of an aspect, we were talking about Sabbath, which is something you're talking about with your mastermind and Terry and I, my wife, you're, daughter-in-law, uh, in this, in getting away from family, sometimes taking a sabbatical is what we would, we would talk about getting away to recharge and how we had to shift our mindset from the, and feeling guilty. Like that's a luxury for mommy and daddy to do that and, and not realizing, no, that's, that's makes us better parents. We had that exemplified and I'll share this testimony from my 12 year old son, Ian, who you've been playing games with. And it was a month ago or so. And Terry and I were squabbling literally at the table. And he, at some point got in the conversation. He said, you guys need to go away together. <laughs> so what you need to go on vacation last, whatever, however many months ago, when you guys went to Cancun, when you came back, you were different. Will you please go away? I thought, wow, that's cool. That's cool. So my, but my premise there though, is to say, do you find that in talking on this topic with people or in viewing the culture that a lot of times we get caught in the, you know, on one hand, you may have people who just aren't willing to do the work, which I want to talk about in a second, but on one hand, people feeling like it's a, it's a luxury. Oh yes. Okay. It's just like, I know you're very invested in the health process, health and wellness. You want people to be weller, weller. which is our, our new word. Yes. Yes. But a lot of times there people think, well, that's just a luxury. You know, when, when I really get on top, then I can start taking supplements. Then right. I can eat right. Then I can get massages regularly. Join the gym, get a personal yeah. trainer when I can afford it. When I like can the afford rich it. people. Well, you know, that just, you know, pushes things down a railroad track because it's like the chicken and the egg. You can't get there unless you make the investment now to start that process. That's why what I'm, what we're talking about here, this is not something that when you're making a hundred thousand dollars, then you start doing all these cool things we're talking about. No, I'm talking about if you're making $7 and 50 cents an hour, you start doing this because it'll accelerate your process, your progress, like nothing else I've ever experienced. Okay. So that's on the one hand side of, of, of getting away from a luxury mentality that this is a necessity. It's like taking your, your vitamins, it's yes. getting, getting sleep, getting water. Kevin, you, re you remember a time when I went through a, a really horrendous financial experience, owed the IRS hundreds of thousands of dollars of just devastating experience. In that period of time, I borrowed a car from our old friend, Danny Barron in mm -hmm. Bowling Green, Kentucky, borrowed a car. It was a, just an old junk rattle trap. You know, it's I had embarrassing. To, oh, it was, it was. The air conditioner didn't work. The power windows didn't work in there. The radio didn't work. And so what did I do? I carried a battery operated cassette player with me. That was more important to me than having the air conditioning work. I didn't care about that. I could sweat and still be okay, but I knew I needed to feed my mind positive, pure, clean, inspirational, motivational material, or I was like a garden that was going to have weeds start growing and they multiply exponentially as well. I needed to be intentional about planting those seeds of positive, good things in my mind. So I would rather have a car today where the air conditioning doesn't work or the power windows don't work. As long as I have a sound system in there, mm -hmm. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So on that, 
we talked about you know, just the hard work and you led off, I think in your, in your blog and probably in your podcast with the, the hard work that people, t- I, and it's not to diss the people, but we have a cultural issue today of people who are not investing in themselves that want the shortcut. We always talk about the microwave society that we're in. And you had somebody recently say, Hey, instead of having to read your book, is there a shortcut to it? You're, no, there's not. And it brought me to the Malcolm Gladwell outliers book and, and perspective of, it feels like you're breaking down. If you want to be success, it is doing the hard work. There's no shortcuts. And then you become the outlier, the person who just did more work than anyone else, but you're going to put your 10,000 hours in, uh, that, that that's what you jumped off with there. I think. And that seems to be from your perspective, something that needs to be gotten out. This is, there's no shortcut. You've got to do the work if you're wanting to get ahead and people are so quick to not want, not be open. Oh, absolutely. It, it's like, you know, they want to run a marathon. How do you run a marathon? You don't just show up the day of the event. You start training months and months and months in advance. So if you can run around a block, that's fine. You start with that and then you increase from there. You've got to put in the work. I mean, we're told that if you put a turkey, you know, we have turkeys on our property. Sometimes people are surprised to see these great big wild beasts on our property. But it, we're told that if you put a turkey in an eight by eight foot enclosure, just a fence, you can have a fence that's only four feet high, totally open on the top. So we're like in a room, totally open on the top. We know turkeys can fly, but that turkey will stay in there and never leave there because they can't fly straight up. They have to have a running area that's at least 10 to 12 feet long. They have to get the momentum going before they can fly. I've heard Zig, or, Zig talk about you know, getting a plane off the ground it takes a tremendous amount of energy until you get up in the air, yeah. then you can back off or like pumping water in our old hand pump. Once the water starts to flow, you can back off. Same thing is true here. You do need to put in the work and then there be, it may be the first few weeks or months where it's like, wow, am I really experiencing anything? But you got to believe that those principles are taking root. If you are taking action and applying the things that you're hearing, reading, seeing, so sometimes in understanding something, it helps to go back into the history, look, look back, look into the past and understand some of those truths. We talk about health and wellness and we can go back and see how much better off in a lot of ways we were back when we did have to grow our own gardens. We did have fresh food. We did have cycles of food, certain times when we had a food, then times when we didn't, almost a fasting and the benefits of that that we don't have today because you can have anything you want, anytime, anywhere, anyhow. And the negative effects of that, of course, processed food, yada, yada. So in that sense, I'm wondering, could you, would you see the same thing with this, that there was a time and I'm, I'll just pick on entertainment before information age, before TV, before the entertainment, where let's take the end of the day, for instance, what else was there to do, but crack open the Bible by the fireplace or, or candlelight to talk with each other to, uh, th- th- are we seeing some ramifications of so much entertainment and having left behind what used to be more of a norm? I bet you can guess Dan's answer, and it's really eye-opening. I'll give it to you, but I want to tell you about some Ziggler fans and supporters, the guys at Truewood, T-R-U-W-O-O-D, who make the most amazing wood watches and sunglasses. I'm a huge fan of all things wood. I live in a huge Aspen stand of the 10 beds in our house. I made nine of them out of the trees from our property and most of the lamps as well. Well, the guys at Truewood make exquisite watches, sunglasses, and bracelets out of wood. With every order, they plant 10 trees. I I love it. They're adorning and saving the planet at the same time. I now wear with pride the Truewood Traveler watch. It has a stainless steel case with a stunning matte black polish. The wood is a light and creamy maple wood, which looks much like my Aspen's. My wife is sporting the Bamboo Ultimate sunglasses, My business partner chose the Truewood Hybrid watch, as did Tom Ziegler. It's made of two grains of wood, which is incredible, as every watch is unique and that the grains are different. Tom said, I love my Truewood watch. It is lightweight, comfortable, and gives me that cool look, which is hard to do. So here is the deal. If you'll go to mytruewood.com, that's my, and then it's T-R-E. U-W-O-O-D.com and use the promo code Ziggler, you'll get 15% off your entire order. You got to check it out. These guys knocked it out of the park utilizing only an Instagram account for promotion. I follow them. They have unreal pictures of nature with the occasional True Wood product showcase. You can see them on Instagram as well at my T 
T-R-U-W-O-O-D, My True Wood. So again, go to My True Wood truwood.com use the promo code ziggler you get 15 percent off your entire order yeah and I, and you know i grew up in a very strict religious home we didn't have radio and tv boy poor little danny boy miller what that did is drove me to books books have been the one most magical thing that opened new worlds of opportunity for me there's nothing that comes close second it's books so I, I experienced that because we didn't have those things that were seen as advantages. You know, you, you just gave me a, a book, Kevin, called Food Rules. And in there, there's all kinds of cute little tips in there. One of them is eat all the treats you want as long as you make them yourself. If you want to have fried chicken, make it. Go through the work that oh it God. takes to have fried rather than just whipping through and getting it. Save a billion dollars in healthcare right there. (laughs) Make your own fried chicken. Yeah. Rather than getting it through the window of your car, you know, where you get it delivered in 30 seconds. If you want to have ice cream, make it. If you want to have candy, make it. Can you imagine how that was slowed up? So there's, there is a valid principle there. Things that really have value that are good for us, take time and effort to build them into our lives. Mm -hmm. But again, it's like good habits. Once it becomes a habit, it's like brushing your teeth. My gosh, if I didn't spend two hours a day reading and listening to positive material, I'd feel like I hadn't brushed my teeth. I, in this thought of looking back at the cultural shifts, I thought about Ray Miller, your dad, my grandpa, and he had a study. And that was just, it seemed like that was a part of his, his, his life. That was an expectation. And I've seen some you know, things posted on Facebook, whatever, with the proliferation of man caves where you have your Barca lounger and your 50 foot TV and your fridge full of beers. Can we get rid of some man caves and go back to some studies that's we've traded them in essence, again, going back to entertainment over investing in oneself, bettering oneself and, and a lack of personal growth ultimately is what you're, is what you're hitting on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, speaking of your grandpa, mm-hmm. Ray Miller, my dad, he had a sixth grade education. Now I use education lightly there because we know education happens in a lot of ways. In addition, just sitting in a seat in the classroom and regurgitating what somebody says up front, but he went to school to the sixth grade and then started working. But as he developed personally and as a pastor and leader of other people, he had a ma- massive study, mm-hmm. lots of books and a, and a dedicated space to just studying and improving himself, personal development. Okay, so in, in, a, in that, you may not have listeners out there, you may not have a place you can put a study, but can we not make, it made me think of a, uh, a shrine, you know, some religious places, uh, people, and then you know, have a certain area in your house and you have your shrine of whatever statue and some candles and whatever. Can we have a spot that is that place for you? Which in all honesty, that's what I, I mean, this is my new, uh, new office and studio. I put it all together. I put the books that have changed my life that matter to me. A lot of people we've interviewed uh, right here on this so that it's a place that for me, it, it helps me engage. And it is, it's that, sh- that sh- shrine in essence, but is that not something again, from a discipline standpoint that we could all do to a degree to foster the reality of this in our life? Oh yeah. No, it, it may not be easy, but if you are clear on what would be desirable, then you can start to move toward that mm-hmm. on our property. You know, we have an old barn that we've rehabbed and I, we call it the sanctuary and people experience that sense of peace when they come there. But in that is my office. That didn't happen overnight. That opened, happened over a period of years. But I was so clear in my vision of what I wanted that now I have exactly what I had seen in that vision. So it, sure, you start with where you are, even if it takes a while to get there. But in the meantime, I mean, I always had places to go where I really could study and concentrate. I know a guy right now who has a little space under the stairs that goes to the upstairs in their house. So it's really like a closet. Mm -hmm. So he just opens the door. That's his space. That's okay. But it's a dedicated space and he can grow from that. Okay. So when we talk about investing in in, in oneself, we started off talking about this a little bit. The uh, Ziegler of course has the seven spokes uh, of the, of the wheel of looking at those different areas of life. And that's one that you have always used as well. So we can look at that. And as an, as an area, for those of you who are wondering, you know, where should you start? I guess it would be, where do you have a need? Where do you want to progress? Which takes us to, okay, to begin with, if you're going to look at investing in yourself, where do you need to? 
right now, is there some relevance for everybody listening out there to say, okay, what is, uh, is what's the most acute need that you need to grow right now? Is it health and wellness? Is it not that we can't do them in all the areas, but if there's a budget yeah. of money and a budget of time and whatever, can we do an audit? Should we do an audit in those spokes in essence? And guys, you can type in Ziegler wheel of life and you'll find a zillion different uh, versions of it. But, uh, to look at those, do an audit, say, what's the most acute place if I'm, if I'm limited, which most people are time and money that I need to invest in and then start there. Yeah. And it could be in a variety of areas. You know, we're, we're talking here pretty much about the monetary return of investing this three to 5%. I really believe in that, but that doesn't preclude somebody to say that they want to go on a yoga retreat or they want to go to a nutritional class or they want to start having a massage therapist you know, come in once a week, those kind of things that may not be directly related to money. But I believe so strongly in the principle that even there, rather than seeing it as something just selfish, I believe in the power of you to be a better parent, to be a better person, and to be more able to give in ways that serve other people well, even if those things don't seem to be leading to a, a direct financial return. But there, for, for me, I mean, it's really easy for me to identify those things like I'm, we're on our way to a conference as we speak. And in that, I'm not looking for ways to increase my income. That's not the primary focus at all. I'm looking for ways to be more impactful, ways to serve people more effectively in doing what I do, helping people to find their purpose and passion and live that out in work that's meaningful. But I know that in doing that, money inevitably shows up. Mm -hmm. If I can do better what my purpose is, money is going to show up in ways that I can't even expect it or describe it. Well, and to that, to money, even if we look at the wheel, uh, Ziegler wheel there and look at that. And of course the point is having balance in your life and not a big deficit in any one area. And part of the essence of that is it will affect every area. So right now, if my, and of course, this is a of course platform, you know, I love if my health and wellness is going to pot, it is limiting my ability to do my job, to be creative, to have critical thinking skills and to do my job well, progress in it and make money. I mean, there is some aspect. They're all, they're all so intricately tied together. That's why mm -hmm. Zig Ziglar and his infamous wheel of life, the seven areas, if you have one area where you're really struggling, it's like a wheel that's terribly out of balance. You're going to go down the road, bumpity, bumpity, bump. It's not pleasant or you know, it's not a good enjoyable at all. So they do, they're, they're so tied together, inextricably tied together. If you do something to make you better in one area, I work with a lot of people who have been through our, our friend Dave Ramsey's material on finances. I love working with those people. If those people got out of debt and are successful in that arena, I know they're great candidates for me because they've already proven that they can see a plan of action and execute it. Absolutely. They have the self-discipline to make it happen. I love working with people who have proven success in another area of life when they come to me and want some work in their career area. Yeah, I think about that with weight loss. You show me somebody who's lost 100 pounds, yep. man, they've got some skills. Absolutely. That's... They're going to be successful in other areas of their life. Yeah. Okay, with the you putting, and you like to put numbers on things, like 48 days to the yes. work you love, and putting 3% of your income as a reasonable, three, uh, below 50,000 after that, 5% five, uh, 5 So, you know, a lot of people like to look at six figures. So if you're making 100 grand, that's 5,000 bucks that you're going to put towards a lot of books, a lot of classes, a couple of nice conferences. Uh, yeah, you're getting ready to go uh, to one. I'm going to go to one, I think. I'll probably spend, I don't know, 1000 1500 bucks or something on that. So that's the money. Now, obviously, though, from a daily habit, if somebody's going to step forward tomorrow hearing this message and go, okay, yes, I get it. I've got to invest in myself. I'm committed. Let's go. There's also going to be a time factor on that. And not to put you to a, you know, tell us all exactly how much time should we spend, but there is somewhat of that. Just when is it going to happen? Give us some help on that of looking at where are some viable ways to look at the time investment that's got to come along with it. Is this daily? Is this weekly? Is it monthly? Is it a certain amount of time? Do you see some, uh, can you just like, you, you know, 3% and 5%, are there some mm -hmm. relevant amounts that, yeah, if you're going to be healthy, if you're going to progress here, you should be spending somewhere in this range. You're going to need to again, daily, weekly, monthly. I don't know. Help us out. Okay, sure. Boy, great question. Yeah, there has to be that component because these things don't happen in and of themselves. It does require the time investment, which just accelerates the process again and makes it more real. 
I would encourage people to be spending 10 to 15 hours a week hmm. in this personal development. Okay. That could be combined with developing a business idea, as an example. Or if somebody is training for a marathon, or they're losing weight, or they're weightlifting, or whatever. But 10 to 15 hours a week in this category of personal development, so that we don't get locked into this, I'm too busy for that. No, you're not too busy for this. If you're too busy for this, your life is likely to decline rather than go up. So, but be conscientious about 10 to 15 hours a week. I spend at least two hours a day just in the reading, listening category. There are other things that I, that doesn't account for going to conferences, seminars, online courses, right. and all, but at least two hours just in that category because I've seen the powerful return of doing that in my own life at the lowest point of my life financially with a business disaster that was choking me. Yeah. I dedicated at least two hours a day to that. And I attribute that one factor to my ability to come up out of that cesspool yeah. more than any one thing, two hours a day investing, not just in out there selling, grabbing something, you know, making something happen to get us out of debt. No, two hours. It's, it's almost like breathing. If we just exhale all the time, ultimately you're going to turn blue and pass out. Your body will force you to stop and inhale. Right. This is that process of inhaling 10 to 15 hours a week. Okay. And when I talk to other folks, your peers, uh, that's what we often hear. We hear Ziegler. He spent, I think his was like three hours a day reading and, all right. and he had a, looks like, so great. So understood that, but I do want to point out to folks, to everybody who's listening. Cause I know there's got a lot of people who are, you're burning the candle at both ends. You don't have a whole lot of time. You got family, you've got, you know, high demands. It's difficult to hear that. So I don't want you to discount it. Uh, Aaron McHugh, who we had on the show, and I don't remember what number it was, uh, talked to me. And I don't know if he talked about it in the show, but he talked about it later. And it was the aspect of being a pro. What is it? What is, what does it mean to be a pro? Now he was talking on an athletic side in this reference point, And it was a guy who was a pro athlete. He was talking to, and to the guy would just, it was a soapbox of his. And he said, look, people think that because we're pros, we spend X amount of time every day all the time, you know, training. Well, obviously we invest a lot there too, but part of it too is that we just do something every day. And he tells a story of getting to a hotel. It was between this and between that it's raining outside. And he had something like eight minutes and he's like, well, you just forget it. And he said, no, be a pro. He's talking to himself, a little self-talk. Mm -hmm. He put his shoes on. He went out and ran in the rain for eight minutes, came back and did it. And what it did for his, his person, but also just the discipline and building that habit. So if you would just speak to that, cause you know, there's people out there that, that are listening to that. So given that they've got five minutes, 10 minutes, mm -hmm. 15, uh, speak to that and you know, where they, where they can do that. Of course, Zig, if they know they've been listening along, they know about automobile universities, talk to it on that. But then also if they're, and I've heard this from you my entire life, if you're going to hear this message and say, yes, agree to it, take action on it, you're going to add to it by proxy. Something else has to be given up. Yes, but to me, that decision is pretty easy, and I don't want to make this process oversimplified, but we all have the same amount of time. We have 168 hours a week. That's what Mother Teresa had. That's what Thomas Edison had, Einstein. That's what Bill Gates has, Richard Branson, anybody. 168 hours. We, we can't expand that, but then we get to decide, how am I going to invest those 168 hours. Sometimes in working with successful people who feel really overburdened and overwhelmed, I have them do a two week time log. Just track your time. We aren't making any changes. Just track your time so we can monitor how you're spending time. But if we start with that and recognize that if somebody works reasonably 40, 50 hours a week, my gosh, I work always at least 50 hours a week. So we start with that. We deduct that from 168. I need a lot of sleep. I'm going to sleep eight hours a night. So we do that then I still got a lot of time. It's just that I say no to a lot of things that other people may say, well, sure, you know, I'll go to the ball game. Sure, I'll sit in front of the TV for three hours and watch, you know, the basketball finals or whatever. Well, there are just a lot of things I say no to because I consider other things to be more important. That's really what it comes down to is simply deciding what is most important. We always have time enough for what we consider most important. So somebody that says they don't have time, no, they get the same time everybody else does. They've just made different decisions about what's really important. Okay. 
So we're get, we're back to the uh, <laughs> making better decisions, uh, fighting against our flesh that may want to watch the TV. Not that that's the devil and that, but it is okay. So I'm I I've uh, found some running races. I'm I kind of want to hit get back into the running race scene again. So I'm waking up in the morning. Well, I, I do I have been waking up early, but I'm having to add that in. So I'm waking up earlier. Well, getting rid of my sleep doesn't work too well. So it's forcing me to go to bed earlier, mm-hmm. which is taking away that time that I would watch TV that I would do whatever uh, on that. And that's well, so what it brings us down to, and, what, and this is probably a good place to wrap up on is before embarking, if somebody hears this, I know it'll resonate with a lot of people, maybe everybody, it's going to resonate. Who's going to hear this and go, well, no, that's stupid. You wouldn't be here listening to the show if you did. So you're going to resonate with it. But if you're going to take action on it, we know, we all know as humans that it's not going to be difficult. Our flesh is going to be balking against this uh, naturally every day that we look into this. So to begin with, I would imagine you'd have us uh, stop for a moment and go, what is it that we want? Outline our goals. What is our motive? Are we, what are we okay with not happening if we don't do this? And yada, yada, yada. I mean, where do you usually start there? Um, I, I know that that's a frustration with myself. If I, there's a lot of things that I'll say, gosh, that sounds great. But unless my motive is strong enough, I know I'm going to fail and never start. Yeah, and you, you know, you're really onto something here. My gosh, we should, could devote another hour to this because effort is not enough. I recently had a guy, his name is Phil Theodore, come in and speak to my mastermind. In January and February of last year, he rowed a boat, R-O-W-E-D, rowed a boat across the Atlantic, 3,300 miles, 40-foot waves, tethered in, thrown out repeatedly, unbelievable story. I'm like, why would you do that? You know, just to prove that you can? No, that's not enough. That's not enough. There has to be more than just effort. There has to be courage that comes above that. But ultimately, there has to be virtue. There has to be some kind of value that drives us. We have to believe that where we're going really matters. I have to believe that I have a contribution to make to people, and I want to stay vibrant and alive and healthy and able to do that, you know, 10 years from now as well as today. So I do things today that invest in the kind of person I want to be 10 years from now. We have to believe that there's a value that we're drawn to. There's a purpose. There's a reason. And for I, that's existence. where I thought you were going. I think you're, you're encapsulating here that is, is a higher calling, a higher Absolutely. purpose. Absolutely. Okay. That, without that, this is all just activity. This is all just, you know, mice running on a wheel. That's not enough to make us do it. No, that we have to identify our why in advance. You know, there's been discussions about that, but yeah, identify your why. Where are you going? What do you want your life to look like three years from now? That's, that's what will determine how you spend your time tonight. Yeah. And it can be, I mean, we, we know that if you spend 20 minutes a day reading, a, you'll read a good book a month, 12 good books a year, that alone can transform a person's life. There are a lot of people who don't do that. We know the average college graduate doesn't read one book a year. I mean, it's horrendous to think about it. It's so easy to open the door to put yourself in the category of high achievers, high income earners, high anything you want it to be. If you just take those little tiny steps of action. Something in this nature uh, that you exemplified to me as a kid, you and mom were both pretty open about your dreams, desires, and goals and would state it. I've never really thought about it till now, but that's a habit that if there's something that I want to go forward to and I want to increase my income, well, why? you know, set it down. What is that? Why? What is that thing that I want to do? Clarify it. Even if I think I know what the reason is, let's clarify it and then speak it out loud, make it exist. Uh, which to me is a big deal. So if I tell my family, look, you know, I really want to, for our, for, for us as a family, for you guys, as you grow up and have kids, I want a beach house. I want a beach house. I, I, I feel like that's be something important for how we're wired that what the outdoors does for our souls. You know, I, I want that it makes it exist. But for me, uh, it also just puts my feet to the fire. I'm, I, I, I gotta admit, sometimes I think that I will evolve and mature to a point where it's not the case. I'm pretty consequences driven. If I'm going to do something, it's better for me to put, well, you told a story. I don't know if that was a, I, I assume that's a publicly known story, it's a story of the uh, SpaceX guy and something that was done where he had an idea. He put it out here and committed to it before it, exactly, is that not common knowledge before it actually <laughs> existed? Yeah. Okay. Peter Diamandis, SpaceX project, but when he put his first kind of big idea out there, and it was essentially to have a team that would go into space, come back, and then do the same thing like in two weeks, because commonly the equipment that you use is destroyed in doing that once. 
Well, he offered a $10 million prize to do that, that the first team that could do that. He didn't have the $10 million. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an issue because it was such an outrageous kind of goal. He had people begging him to be the sponsor for that, to put up the $10 million, to have their name associated with it. I love that idea. Put out a big why, Mm -hmm. a big goal, and you'll have everybody, you know, providing resources and ideas to help you in that. Well, I love the accountability. We had a guy, uh, a guy that I knew named Ken come to an event years ago. He was morbidly obese and wanted to lose weight. And so he signed up for a 5k six months down the road, Wow! signed up for a marathon a year later, registered, bought the plane tickets ahead of time, (laughs) reserved the hotel and then told everybody about it. So this dude does not come through. He's out a bunch of money. He's going to feel ashamed to everybody. And what that did is it put his, you know, put, put his pants on fire. And so he showed up at work, told everybody about it there. And now instead of sitting down and having his big lunch, he would eat something small at the desk and go out and walk. People joined him. So now there's a group that's going at lunchtime. It's this great story. But I just thought, man, the guy won by putting his butt on the fire day one. So in that, as folks are listening and you're, and you're struggling with your motivation and are in, and pulling through and actually seeing this through taking action, being consistent and walking it out. Are there some things that you can do, uh, in this nature? There, there was a, you probably know it better than I do. There was some kind of a, a, a movement, an idea that was, I was like the thousand dollar something. It, and the idea was, okay, you state something that you're going to do a goal, mm-hmm. give a buddy, or dad mm-hmm. or whatever, a thousand bucks mm-hmm. and say, if I do not meet this at this date, you get to, you get to give it to the a charity that I hate something like that. Is that yeah. right about what yeah. was, okay. Uh-huh. It's yeah. brilliant. It is. There, there's a lot to be said for putting yourself on the line like that. Now in doing that, I would encourage you to find people who are going to encourage you, find people yeah. who believe in you and in that goal who maybe have had success themselves. The reason I continue to go to conferences is not to get new content or new knowledge, but it's to rub shoulders with people who are also on this same path that I'm on so that I get to spend time with them because spending time with them will keep me motivated, not just accountable and that they're going to call me up and say, Hey, did you do that? But just knowing that we're on this path together. So I want to hang around people who I know are on this path, not people who are going to say, nah, you can't do that. It's never been done. You can't do it. You're a loser. Nah, you know, so choose carefully the people that you share your goals with yeah. as being people who are going to cheer you on. Okay. But in better than giving a thousand bucks to somebody to hold your feet to the fire, that is somewhat of, again, where we began investing in yourself, taking a portion of your hard earned money, go out now and spend it on again, personal coaching on a membership to 48 days Eagles or going to an event, uh, and, uh, like, like the one that you're going to, I mean, we talk about ZLC, Ziggly Legacy Certification. It's a big investment, but the people come there are hundred percent sold in. They feel like, uh, they've got to make something happen with it. That's beautiful. Uh, you've got, what, what a couple of events you've got coming up. Coaching with excellence, our kind of premier event, Mm teaching people how to position themselves and profit from being coaches, innovate people who have ideas. I mean, musicians, artists, sculptors, comedians, people who have a skill, but they don't know how to create an economic model for that. Okay. You know what? We'll wrap up there with me pitching him because 48 day, I mean, uh, coaching with excellence. Sorry. Let's go to 48 days.com and you can go find the coaching, uh, with excellence. We talk a lot here about ZLC Ziegler legacy certification coming in and understanding the principles that Zig Ziegler taught and how to not only take those on for yourself, but then to teach them to others. And you actually then have the Ziegler name behind you, your license to do this on a coaching standpoint. It's awesome. And I, of course, recommend it uh, dramatically. However, what I do love and would put in union with that is coaching with excellent excellence because it's going to tell you about the business the lifestyle of being a coach being a consultant which we have a lot of people this is what you told me probably a decade ago and why we did a venture i got to do it with you back then that was uh, i guess the seeds of of what you're doing now Mm -hmm. which is saying there are so many people and i know there's so many in the ziggler audience we have so much to offer people if you're sitting across the table this is your words if you're sitting across the table you have great value to give to somebody else and to lead them guide them coach them counsel them Uh, however, it's moot. If you don't find somebody who will trust you that you sold, that will sit across from you so that you can do that. So the business side of coaching, I, I I would, uh, I think from your standpoint, you'd say that is the biggest downfall of it. Uh, we got people with good info. They just don't know how to do it. And that's, is that 
pretty much the heart of coaching with excellence. Oh, it is. Yeah, we encounter a lot of people who have acronyms after their names because they're certified by multiple organizations. They know how to coach well if somebody is sitting there in the room with them. They don't know how to create a business out of that. They don't know how to leverage their unique intellectual expertise into other kind of products and revenue streams. Those are the kind of things that we talk about. Okay, well, folks, go to 48 Days. Go to Coaching with Excellence. Make your investment in yourself there. If this is something that's of interest to you, tell him that I sent you because he'll send me a thank you card. <laughs> and uh, But, hey, thanks for being here. Again, investing in yourself. Turn the podcast off and think about this. Audit your life. Look at the Ziggler Wheel of Life if you want to and, uh, and look at where you feel like you need to invest. It. Talk with your spouse if you need to and discuss this necessity for your personal success. Dad, thanks as always. A blast doing this with you. Absolutely. Pleasure being here. Folks, thanks for tuning in as we inspire our true performance together. And we'll talk with you in the next Ziggler Show.